Ingram's book has been a little bit sneaky. Last week they sent out this newsletter, which I didn't even open at the time because I was just like, whatever book builder, I don't use that. Buried inside that email was this. Ingram Spark is increasing their prices by three to six percent depending on where you are getting your books printed with them. That's fine. It's not like I just spent hours and hours of my time figuring out how to price my books properly so that I could sell them on my own web store without losing any money. Isn't being a self-published author so much fun? Frustration aside, Ingram Spark is not doing this to deliberately screw over self-published authors. There has been a long rumbling about paper shortages and printing difficulties and distribution challenges that have affected all of the publishing industry since pretty much the beginning of this pandemic. All honesty, this Ingram Spark object to pricing is probably long overdue. That doesn't make me feel any better because I was only making like a dollar per hardcover anyway, and now I'm just like, <sighs> Right, okay, so what can we actually do about this? Hey guys, it's Deborah, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about the business side of self-publishing. Price increases are just a normal part of life and business, unless you live in a place with a deflationary economy, in which case, for simplicity, we are just going to look at this problem as one that applies to pure print book sales and we're not going to get into different product mixes or what happens if you're doing ebooks and you're doing Kindle Unlimited and things like that. There are two obvious ways of dealing with price increases. First way is to pass it on to the end customer. But basic supply and demand theory says that for every X increase in your prices, you are going to lose Y in terms of demand for your product. How much of a loss in demand is going to depend on the price elasticity of that product or essential goods and services like housing, transport, food, medicine. Those are all things which are pretty price inelastic because people can't usually find a good alternative. And don't get me wrong, there are all sorts of different ways to position your product or service within each of those particular markets. So for example, you would not put plastic surgery on the same level as a quadruple heart bypass. And this is the same thing with books and publishing. The price elasticity of your particular book depends on what kind of book you are publishing. Well, if you do nonfiction and you are a industry leading subject matter expert in that particular field and your book has been mandated as the required text for a particular course or subject, then you're going to be able to pass on those price increases no problem because the majority of your readers are going to have to buy your book anyway. If you're writing fiction and in a genre or niche where there are loads and loads of titles being published, then your book is going to have a high price elasticity. People are going to see your book, they're going to see that it's a higher price compared to other titles on the market, and they're going to be like, nope, there are like 50,000 other books that I could buy that are also fantasy books, so I'm going to pass on the higher price book and go for the cheaper book. Or if you're somebody like Brandon Sanderson and you're doing things like putting out Leatherbound limited 10 year anniversary editions of your books, then those are a different type of market again, because Leatherbounds are the luxury good in book world. And generally speaking, you can put up the prices of luxury goods as high as you want, because the people who are buying the luxury goods are not generally price sensitive as a rule. So if you're fortunate enough to be in one of these two categories, then I would just pass on the cost to your end customers and explain why you're doing it transparently. For the rest of us, we're probably going to have to absorb some, if not all, of the price increases because it's already hard enough to convince people to buy your book, let alone trying to convince them to buy your book after you've put up the prices. How much of an impact does this change have on you guys? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear your thoughts. What can we actually do about this? Well we can do a little something called value chain analysis. Value chain analysis is the process of looking at a product's entire supply chain and making sure that every single step along the way is adding some sort of value to the end product. Because if it wasn't, then it's just costing you money and not adding any value to the end customer, so you would actually get rid of that particular step. I've talked about the supply chain before, and if you're not familiar with that concept, I suggest checking out this video, which will give you a really good overview of what it is in the context of the publishing industry. But it's basically the entire process of taking raw materials and turning them into finished products. That means we start back at harvesting trees to pulp it and turn it into paper, all the way through to the entire publishing process. Once you understand that, you can kind of figure out where your business slots into the entire supply chain. And for us self-publishers, we're really right at the end, somewhere over here. 
So when you've got cost increases in a primary industry like paper production, for example, you really feel the ramifications of that all the way down the supply chain. Most businesses, even ones that you would think are very, very simple, have a extremely complicated supply chain. And you realize this very quickly when you try to do something like trace every single part of your product all the way back to its origins in a primary industry. In theory, you should be able to proportionally allocate the total price paid by a customer for the end good or service to each of these processes in the entire value chain. And the proportion allocated to each step should reflect the total amount of value add that step contributes towards the end product or service. So far, this seems kind of obvious. Here's the big takeaway. When you look at all those chunks of value that you've attributed to each part of the value chain, remember that chunk of value has a profit margin built in for the business that is producing that part of the value chain. The more of that value chain you control, the more chunks of profit you get to keep in your pocket. And this is why you have so many people telling you that you need to have your own mailing list. You need to have your own website because having those two things enable you to take more control of your entire value chain. If I have a mailing list where I can get directly in contact with my customers, then I can bypass other marketing platforms in order to sell my book. If I have my own store on my own website, then I can bypass other retailers and distributors like Amazon and get people to buy directly from me. Instead of having to fork over a huge chunk of my cover price for the retailer and the distributor, I get to keep all of that in my own pocket, which means I don't need to sell as many copies in order to break even. We don't have the budget and the resources of traditional publishers to do all of the normal marketing stuff that comes with our books. We usually have to get pretty creative and we're doing most of it ourselves. If I'm doing all this work to generate traffic, to drive it to an Amazon page, then why shouldn't I keep most of the profits as well? Because you can imagine a scenario, right? Where if I didn't do any of that marketing and promotion work, it's very unlikely that anybody is going to magically find my book on Amazon and buy it of their own accord. Like you have to put in a ton of work on the cover, on the blurb, on everything else that you're doing in order to let people know about your book and why it's awesome and why they should buy it. So if I'm going to do all of that work, it seems a little bit foolish to me to just stop short of taking that final step so that I get compensated for all of that. I do accept though that fulfillment and logistics is not necessarily a challenge that every single self-publisher wants to learn or can afford to handle themselves. So if that's not you, then you do have to look at other alternative ways of trying to maintain your profit margin. And the other options you have are to change up your product mix or try to somehow lower the costs of your production. Both of those are very valid tactics to try, but I'm not a huge fan of it. There is a limit to how much you can cut in terms of your costs, but there is no limit to how much you can earn. When I did my first book, I cut the cash costs as low as I could possibly go and still come out with a minimum viable product. There's like two main things I could do to cut the costs. The first would be to reduce the amount of time that I'm spending on the book, which would result in lower quality illustrations. The other thing I could do is to reduce the quality of printing that I'm using for my books. So I could go from the premium color to the standard color, which I'm reluctant to do for a picture book where the main drawer is the illustrations. That just seems like a bad idea. If I were to do that, I feel like those reductions in the cost of production is actually going to directly impact on the quality of my product and my readers and customers are actually going to feel that. And so that's why I don't want to do that. Same thing goes for trying to reduce page count by reducing your font size or cutting out words. Readers are smart. They're going to notice that something is up. The other way I can lower the cost of production would be to look at investing upfront in a big offset print run, which again, at this stage of my self-publishing career, I'm quite reluctant to do because that's a lot of inventory risk for me to take. Not necessarily in terms of whether I can move that many copies. Like now I'm confident I can move at least 200 copies, but also how long it would take me to move those copies and whether or not I'm going to have errors that I need to fix in those copies stack. So that's that. The other method in terms of changing your sales mix, uh, again, I'm not a huge fan of it because you don't really have that much control over your sales mix. Ultimately, whether somebody buys your book in hardcover, paperback, audiobook, or ebook really comes down to their personal preferences as a reader and how they like to read their books. So you don't have a lot of control over that 
other than to make sure that you're offering as many different types of formats as possible, which gives you a whole host of other headaches because each format is going to have its own distinct production requirements, which then makes your break even analysis even more complicated. Now, I did say in a previous video that that was a headache that I did not like dealing with and I would happily pay somebody 10 to 15% to just deal with all of that for me. But over time, I have actually evolved my thinking on this subject. The more time I spend thinking about this, the more I'm convinced that trying to control as much of the value chain as possible is going to be the answer going forward for self-publishing because it just gives you that much more of a buffer against things like price increases. And while we've been talking about print books in this whole video to keep it simple, all of these principles apply to digital products as well. And in fact, if you control the entire distribution chain for your digital products, oh my goodness, you would make a killing. You would be able to massively increase your profitability without having to sell a whole lot more books. I don't know about you guys, but for me, that is massively empowering because Selling and marketing still terrifies me to the point where I would rather learn about logistics and fulfillment to learning about sales and marketing, but oh, don't. just suck it up and learn how to sell. Like that is a good skill to have. And so the thought of only having to convince like a few hundred people to buy my books in order to hit this level of income from self-publishing, that is a lot more company. How much of an impact are Ingram Sparks price increases going to have on you guys? And what are you planning to do about it? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I publish a new video like this on the business side of self-publishing. See you guys in the comments.